And we are once again bringing you another lesson. Solid Foundation Israelite Academy. I'm your host, Shabar Judah Ben Israel. And um, this lesson is going to be concerning what will happen on September 23rd, 2017. Because um, I hear a lot of brothers and sisters expounding on this, you know, talking about this thing, and um, they keep asking me what will happen on September 23rd, 2017. I might have certain brothers that may message me or whatever, you know, even sisters trying to understand what will happen on September 23rd, 2017. Now, what I have heard the most, more than anything, is the rapture. Certain brothers and sisters are bugging out, talking about the rapture, man. Talking about the rapture, one being, one being taken and the other being left. But don't you know something, brothers and sisters, concerning the Bible? I don't know if you know, but concerning the Bible... What you find hard to believe, brothers and sisters, most of you anyway, that the Holy Bible don't even mention in, that it don't even mention the term rapture. The the term rapture is not even mentioned in the Holy Bible. So this this rapture thing, I don't know where they're getting this from because the Holy Bible doesn't even mention rapture, the term rapture. Period. We're gonna break down the rapture deception lesson. On today so you can get fully the edification so you can go and um, stop bugging out brothers and sisters and stop believing this bullshit that a lot of individuals are feeding you talking about the raptures to come on September 23rd 2017 there's no such thing as a rapture man but I'm going to give you the full understanding on this lesson concerning the rapture deception so you can see what's really going on. So I know you see this image right here before you, right? I know you, you guys see this image right here before you. Now this is concerning supposedly the rapture that's supposed to be going on September 23rd, 2017 this year. But if you knew the Bible, you would know ain't no such thing as this. Because I'm going to show you, man. Get your pens, your pads, your papers. Let's get into it. Now, um, concerning the rapture deception, according to the Christian church, according to the Christian church uh, people, the man they call Jesus Christ, who we know as Yahweh Shai, he's going to crack the clouds. He's going to gather up, take all believers, basically the Christian church supposedly, is going to be beamed up. Or you can see right here, they're going to be ascended up. And after he gets those believers, okay, supposedly of the Christian society, after he gets those believers... After they are called up. Afterwards. There's going to be like. A great multitude of people. That didn't make it. And they call. These people. Left behind. The people that's left behind. Right. They was the ones that didn't make it. They wasn't. Uh, ascended up. Okay. And the ones that are left behind. According to the Christian society, the Christian uh, the Christian system, the ones that are left behind are the ones who didn't believe the gospel. So, the Antichrist then going to make an appearance. He's going to come in the midst of the ones that's left behind. And there will be, there will be seven years, uh, I believe there will be seven years of trouble and turmoil. They call it the seven year tribulation period. Now nowhere in the nowhere in the Bible does it speak about a goddamn um 
seven year tribulation uh, era. That's nowhere in the Bible, man. Nowhere in the Bible now. So it's whether you believe in the gospel or accept the mark of the beast during that time, the ones that are left behind. And um, you have two alternatives. Take a stand for the gospel, accept the mark of the beast, which includes the radio frequency identification chip. And um, if you don't accept it, the ones who believe on Christ and die for their faith supposedly is going to be beheaded because they didn't believe in this new world order system including this RFID chip so the old ones uh, would, would be beheaded because they didn't believe in earlier times so they started believing after the rapture so now to show their integrity towards Christ the Messiah. Basically what they would do is um, they would take a stand and be martyred for his name's sake. You know, they, they would be beheaded or decapitated by the guillotines in the RFID camps. Or, or, some, or, 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 or they would be decapitated in the um, concentration camps or FEMA camps, however you want to call it. The ones that received the RFID chip that was left behind, these would be able to continue to buy, sell, and live a glorious life. And um, after the seven year tribulation period, Christ is supposed to come back and destroy the Antichrist. Basically, and um, destroy those who also was down with the New World Order agenda and took this RFID chip. All right, and um, that's pretty much how the Christian society believe in this rapture doctrine. Just making a long story short, but um. Uh, I got news for you guys. Christ, who they call Jesus, we know him as your side. He's not going to make no third return on the earth. Because according to this rapture doctrine the Christian church teaches, that that means that the Messiah will have to make a third return on the earth. Because, you know, he made his first appearance during the time of like, uh, 4 BC I believe that's when he was born or whenever he was born he made his first appearance right and uh, we know that he will come back to judge this wicked system and that would be his second appearance right so if he come back and make a second appearance according to the Christian doctrine he's gonna take the Christian believers with him to reign with him for a millennium, which is a thousand years. Okay, and the ones that didn't believe in the Christian faith, they would be left behind. But after the seven year tribulation, that means that the Messiah Christ will come again, man. And ain't nowhere in the Bible that it said that Christ will make three damn three damn appearances, man. So what about the third coming then? Supposedly according to the Christian doctrine. And then after the third coming. Supposedly everyone is going to live happily ever after. After, after the sinners are, are taken down and destroyed. In the kingdom of heaven to come. There ain't no third coming man. Because we're going to show you that's a lie. That's nothing but falsehood and fabrication. That's a lie man. But this is what happens. When you start letting these damn Gentiles. These heathens. Uh get first dips when you start letting these damn heathens basically teach the word let's get more of understanding of this this rapture deception alright now I'm going to show you something guys 
Let's go in the Bible. This is Colossians, the second chapter, beginning with verse 8. Okay. It says, Beware at least any man spoil, spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not, and not after Christ, man. So it says, Beware at least any man spoil you through philosophy. And we're talking about this rapture doctrine, this rapture. Because the man that did that, that sparked a lot of black, Hispanic, Native Americans who continue to live the Christian life when we try to tell you that you're the true Jews, you're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. You, you black, Hispanic, Native Americans want to be ignorant and still follow after those Christian churches, okay, and believe in this rapture doctrine. This is for you, Colossians 2 and 8, because what's going on is basically that you are being spoiled through philosophy and vain deceit. And this is also after the tradition of men. Because this don't have a damn thing to do with Hamashat Yahawashai, who they call Christ. So Colossians 2 and 8 tells you that this comes from tradition of man. Now, who is this particular man? Now get into it. Well, most people don't know as well that what they call the uh the left behind doctrine, that didn't start in this modern day generation, okay? The left behind doctrine does not did not start in this. Uh, modern day generation we're going to give you some history on it brothers and sisters this uh, left behind doctrine came basically from the catholic church the roman catholic church as you can see the image before you the roman catholic church okay I have a lot of I have a lot to bring out so just kind of stay in tune and listen Jot down these uh these notes. So this uh left behind doctrine did not start in modern day generation. This deception came from the Roman Catholic Church, the foundation of the so-called rapture doctrine. That's where this came from. Now we're gonna go into the history of this particular guy by the name of Jesuit General Atnitius. Okay. So here we are. Okay. This guy is goes by the name of Jesuit General Agnatius. That's A G N A T I U S, I believe. Jesuit General Agnatius, I believe. And um when you think of him, you think of the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church, they are the most satanic religious institution on the on the on the planet, man. On the face of the earth. Alright. And um anything that derives from this system, anything that comes from the Catholic Church, man, is straight deception. Don't believe it. Don't fall for it. Don't even submit to it. So what about this guy? What about this guy? We need to go into some history concerning this guy because this is dealing with what you so-called Christians believe uh, and as the rapture. All right. All right. Slide this camera over so we can get into it. Now, and, and, and I believe this guy um, in 1585, Jesuit General Anitius, he was the founder of of what you would call the Jesuit order. The Jesuit order. All right. Now what what is a Jesuit? A Jesuit is a Roman Catholic order of priests, okay? That was founded by the guy that you're looking at. They called him Saint Ignatius uh Loyola, I believe as well. That's what else they called him, Saint Ignatius Loyola. Okay. That's another name he went by. And he, uh, brothers and sisters, was a, a, a Roman Catholic. And he started the Catholic Order of Priests. Basically, he, he founded that. Alright. 
the Jesuit order. Okay. So, as I was saying about this guy, in 1585, Jesuit General Anitius, the founder of the Jesuit order, sent forth a decree to this, to this also Jesuit, Francisco Rivera. Now, let me pull Francisco Rivera up. All right. So here's a good image of Francisco Rivera. Now keep in mind, uh, Jesuit General Ignitus, he sent forth a decree to who? The guy that you're looking at, Francisco Rivera. To do what? To compose a 500-page commentary of revelations. A 500-page commentary of revelations based on what based on this damn um uh, what you would call rapture so these two jesuits which is general general uh anitis and um also francisco ribera these two jesuits came together all right and um, came up with this left behind doctrine bullshit. This left behind doctrine nonsense. They came up. These two men came together to come up with this nonsense. That was developed by who? The damn Roman Catholic Church and the 1500s people. And brothers and sisters, this was developed by the Roman Catholic Church in what century? The 15th the century. The 15th century, that's when this was developed by this damn wicked-ass Roman Catholic Church. You don't have to believe me for what I'm saying. But most modern Christians in the church, you black, Hispanic, Native American Christians... Who are Israelites that don't want to keep God's commandments. You fail to do research concerning this review, man. You don't want to do your research, but that's fine. Because we're going to hit you in the head with the truth anyway. So let's continue to move on concerning this, uh, uh, what you would call rapture doctrine. Or, or, or this left behind deception. Let's continue to move on. So we giving you the history, how all this rapture shit, left behind shit came about, because like I said, you can see his name at the top, Ignatius, okay, the founder of the Jesuit order, what he did, like I mentioned, um, concerning San Francisco Rivera, he hired him, you know, on his team, and they sat down and came up with this damn 500 page doctrine, you know, concerning his left behind, this rapture shit. All right, and um, the reason why this was done is because the Jesuits they wanted attempt they wanted to make an attempt to deceive masses of the people, man. And um, they needed this doctrine, brothers and sisters. They needed this doctrine to restrain the true followers of Christ, man, who they who we know as Yahweh Shai. So they needed this doctrine to keep back the true followers. Of, of Yahweh Shai on the sideline while this new world order this new world order destroy and kill everyone that's what it's all about that's what it's all about the new world order I know y'all know about that the new world order that's coming basically that's already here and all the bullshit that comes along with it all the hell that comes along with it they want to keep you on the sideline, man. Why they implement this this NWO, this New World Order, and destroy and kill up many blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They want to keep you on the sideline. Now, why would they want to do this? Because y'all basically, and when I say y'all, I'm talking about the Christian followers, the Christian church, the Christians, the pagan Christians. That's what I'm talking about. Right, y'all talking about 
uh, a tribulation period. All right, y'all talking about a tribulation period to come. And y'all don't even know that we already in the tribulation period, man. We've been in the tribulation period. Brothers and sisters, if you didn't know that, a lot of people don't know that, but we've been in the tribulation period ever since Christ left the earth the first time. Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, as Israelites, we've been in the tribulation period. But they got you believing the tribulation period is coming. You know? This is Acts 14.22. I'm going to prove that the Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we've been in this damn captivity. We've been in we've been in what you would call tribulation period. A lot of niggas waiting for the tribulation period to pop off. We've been in the tribulation period ever since after the death of Christ. Acts 14.22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. See? Says, so through much tribulation, we must enter into the kingdom of God, man. I'm giving you precept to show you that tribulation. We've been in tribulation, man. Okay? It ain't no tribulation that awaiting us. We've been in tribulation. All right? Yeah, so from the time of Christ's ascension... Black, Hispanic, Native Americans as Israel, we've been in the tribulation. We've been in the damn tribulation, man. This is Deuteronomy 28, 15. Truth be told, before Christ's ascension, man, we've been in tribulation, period. Basically, before Christ even came on the earth, Israel was going through the tribulation, period. Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh, thy power, which is thy God, the God of Israel, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, what is those curses? Tribulation. So when we violated the when we violated the commandments of God, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and when we received these curses from the Most High, according to Deuteronomy 28, 15, going all the way down to 6 to 8, that was the beginning of tribulation right there, man. You know, let's get Deuteronomy 2868. Because we received tribulation really before Christ. You know, and then after Christ's ascension, after his death and his ascension. Deuteronomy 2868. And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, what is this talking about? The transatlantic slave trade. Or some may say the middle passage. Some may say the triangular, triangular trade. How we were sold as slaves to into Egypt again, which is America today. So that was tribulation. 99 million Jews. 99 million Jews slaughtered. 99 million Jews died during the transatlantic slave trade, man. The real Holocaust. That's tribulation right there. Okay. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way, whereof I speak unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning you won't see your homeland no more again. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And there you shall be sold to your enemies. Being a damn slave. Being a goddamn servant. That's tribulation, man. Being sold to the white man. Okay? And every other heathen, this, every other, every other heathen nation that the Bible talks about. We being sold to our enemies for bond man and for bond man. Bond man and bond woman. And no man shall buy you. We being sold as goddamn slave man and slave woman as the nation of Israel. That's tribulation right there, man. But a lot of brothers and sisters talking about they waiting on the tribulation to come. You know, they praying that they don't get caught in the uh, supposedly seven year tribulation period. And the Bible never said that it's no damn seven year tribulation period. But this is what they hoping not to be part of. Not knowing that they already in the damn tribulation period, man. Okay. That's the plan, man. That's the plan for the Roman Catholic Church. They needed they needed to uh, push this doctrine to, to keep the true followers back, man. From Yahweh Shah, who they call Jesus Christ. To keep you on the sideline and to keep you waiting, thinking the tribulation period is in a futuristic time. Not even knowing that your ass going through it right now, man. You understand? 
so this new world order can destroy and kill everybody, man. Man, I'm telling you. Let's continue on. This is 1 Peter 4, and let's begin with verse 12. Beloved, think not, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. Now, what is the fiery trial? Tribulation period, man. Which is to try you as though something strange thing is happening to you. Okay. First Peter 4 and 13. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Hamashat Yahweh Shai, Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. So that's first Peter's four. Verses 12 and 13, it said, Do not think strange concerning the fiery trials that you go through as Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So that's tribulation period, right?